Welcome to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. And uh, the guest we have now has been in the news internationally, and what he's been doing, what he has done, has also been in the news, but uh, it is not a very popular thing in the Philippines yet, and that is why we have him with us. But before that, uh, let's roll a short video to give you an idea of what we're going to be uh, talking about. It's going to be Walk Across America, and it's going to be about the Bone Marrow Registry. Please roll the video. One month ago, I stepped out of the Atlantic Ocean and headed west. I saw Jared walking by. I had to go out and grab him. I'm really, I'm, I'm really awestruck by what he's trying to do. When we saw him coming up the street, everyone here in Wasabi was going crazy. Like, oh, is, is he actually going to stop in here? And we were so excited. If you want to do something like you're doing, do it now while you can. Don't wait because you never know when you can. What's up everybody at Entourage and Warner Brothers? My name is Jared Richbaum. I'm a photographer, filmmaker, and a deckhand in the yachting industry. But right now I am one month into a seven month walk across America. I started walking in Atlantic City, New Jersey, jumped out of the ocean, and I'm walking all the way to San Francisco. But right now I'm passing through my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I've walked about 400 miles. Um, I'm filming a documentary about the whole experience and I've chosen to walk for Be The Match, which is the largest bone marrow registry. So I'm on a mission to swab cheeks and register as many people as I can to uh, the bone marrow registry. My inspiration to walk across America came from my good friends Todd and Jocelyn Miller. In 2012, Jocelyn was diagnosed with a rare blood disease and was given only months to live. Her last hope for survival was a bone marrow transplant, and her brother Leeson happened to be her perfect match and saved her life. The film documents her recovery, as well as the friendly competition that formed between her and I to knock items off our respective bucket lists. Along with the goal of adding people to the National Bone Marrow Registry, I'm also visiting hospitals, doing media appearances, and interviewing the people that I come across every day. I am hearing their stories, and I'm encouraging them to make a bucket list and to knock off at least one item per year. Together, we can not only save lives, but we can also encourage people to chase their dreams. And hey Johnny, just think about what my calves will look like by the time I reach California. It's Mr. Jerry, Jared Richbaum, who we have with us right now. Jared, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having okay, me. Okay, Jared, that was an introduction of uh, what you've done. You walked across America. In your own words, please. Sure. Well, what you just saw was a video um, that was a competition that um, was hosted by Entourage, a uh, TV show in America. And that was my uh, submission video. Um, I did go on to be a finalist. However, I did not win the competition. Um, but yes, I walked from Atlantic City, New Jersey to Long Beach, California. Uh, it took me seven months, and I averaged about 25 miles a day. And uh, it was all for a great cause, the National Bone Marrow Registry, which is called Be The Match. And um, my goal wasn't to raise money for the organization. It was actually to register people um, by swabbing cheeks. So it's a Q-tip swab of your cheek, and that DNA can be processed. And you can tell if you're a match for somebody who's on the waiting list for a bone marrow transplant. And um, I chose this charity because of a friend who had a, a successful bone marrow um, transplant. And I just found out that following her story, I found out that there are thousands of Americans who die simply because they can't find a match. And there's a problem in America and all over the world with not enough people on that registry. So I took it upon myself to go tell people about it and register people to that National Bone Marrow Registry. Okay, so uh, bone marrow registry, swab DNA, and then you find the match. What is the purpose of all this? I mean, what uh, uh, bone marrow transplant would uh, be uh, would benefit? Uh, what kind of diseases? People? Sure. So s anyone with a rare blood disease or a blood cancer like leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, their last hope or last chance at survival is to have a bone marrow transplant. So um, one in every 540 people who swabs their cheek will go on to save a life. So on my walk, I had a goal of registering 540 people. 
um, which I did. And right now, we've got three potential matches. So hopefully, at least one of those will go on to save somebody's life. Um, but it, you know, it's just a shame that there's there's people out there that can't find their match, and it's just a matter about a, a matter of getting more people to register. Okay, so uh, we, we were talking earlier, and you said you, you it took you seven months. We're talking about three thousand miles coast to coast. You started from New Jersey, ended up in California, and uh, seven months of walking. How did this, uh, how did this uh, uh, register with the media, with the U.S. media, with, uh, with, your, with your goal to raise awareness? Um, I did news appearances in as many cities as I could along the way. Um, I was in the newspaper and I did radio interviews to, to help spread the word. And I would also announce events that, that I was about to have, upcoming events where people could come and, and register. Um, so I think, you know, just in Los Angeles, my interview in Los Angeles alone went out to 12 million people. Wow. So hopefully some of those took the initiative to order a swab kit or go to their local center or hospital to, to swab their cheek and go, you know, potentially go on to save someone's life. Okay. So uh, how many people succumb to uh, bone marrow uh, disease? What, what do you call the diseases? It has to do with uh, either... I guess bone cancer or uh, uh, leukemia. Yeah, blood blood cancers. Blood so, cancers. Yeah, leukemia, lymphoma. Right. Uh, the the woman who uh, inspired my walk had aplastic anemia. Mm -hmm. So basically, those blood diseases prevent that person from ha from replenishing red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So by having a bone marrow transplant, uh, the person who who is the donor um, really reboots your system. Mm -hmm. So they would they would uh, their blood and their DNA is similar to yours, that it would um, enhance and, and create more red blood cells. And you would actually be living with their immu immune system now. So you, you technically become their, their blood brother. So what happens is they actually get a piece of your bone, including the marrow, I mean, of the um, donor. And so the process yes. is, if you are one of the one of 540 mm -hmm. people who is a match, uh, you would go to your local hospital for, for more testing, and if you are that best match, 80% uh, of the time it's just giving blood. Uh, they ah. filter your stem cells from right. your blood, mm -hmm. and so it's a stem cell transplant. But 20% of the time, they'd actually need your bone marrow. So um, they would put you to sleep and take a shot from each of your hip, extract your bone marrow. It's painless, and a lot of th people do think that it is painful, but it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, you could be sore from the medication for the next day or two. Uh, but it's a very small price to pay, and your, your bone marrow replenishes within six weeks. So there's really no harm in it, and you know it's, it's a small price to pay to save someone's life. Okay, tell us about your walk. You started out in uh, New Jersey April, April 2015. Four, yes, April okay. 14th. Right. And, um, April, April 14th, 14, 2015. Yep. So right. you know, walking across America was on my bucket list. It's something that I've mm -hmm. wanted to do for a very long time. And when I was inspired to do so, I planned for a few months in advance. Um, I prepared myself mentally and physically, um, physically with yoga and stretching and long walks and running. Um, and then I finally told my parents and asked them if they could drive me to Atlantic City <laughs> so I could get started. From? Um, from my home base in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Pennsylvania, okay. where I was born and raised. Steelers. The Steelers, yes. <laughs> so. Um, so my parents drove me to Atlantic City so I could actually start in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So I stepped out of the Atlantic City Ocean. I didn't know what to expect. And uh, the first day I did 10 miles. The second day I did 20 miles. And you know, as I got used to it, my body got used to it, I could do 25 to 30 miles every day You know, once I was out west. Um, but a lot of the research went into the, the correct camping gear that I needed because mm -hmm. I was staying, sleeping in a tent. Um, to, you know, all facing the weather. So I walked in the cold, I walked in the snow, I walked in dead heat of the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so I was dealing with the mosquitoes and um, animals. I saw a lot of snakes and coyotes and raccoons. And, so you, you, yeah. you took, uh, you didn't exactly go through the streets. I mean, you were going through um, paths and... Yeah, a little bit around. of both. Um, mm -hmm. On the East Coast, I was trying to stick to, uh, it's called Route 30, 
it's a highway, but mm -hmm. it's not an uh, interstate. Okay. And I would walk against traffic, and it's very dangerous because cars are coming at right. me. Cars right. are zooming by 70, 80 miles per hour. Um, so I'm always alert. And the first half of the walk, I didn't listen to music, so I wasn't distracted. And I was just paying attention to every car coming mm. you know, right at me. Um, and one of the most unsafe things right now is just people texting and driving. Yes, so I just yes. had to make sure that people were paying attention, saw me there, and that I wasn't going to be hit by a car. Unfortunately, there were many close calls. Really? And people came into the, onto uh -huh. the shoulder where I was. And, um, you know, I, I managed to not get hit by a car. Great. And, great. Um, yeah, I made it. So. so were there any real life-threatening situations? I mean, you just mentioned a few about cars. I mean, you know, were there any life-threatening situations with animals or with, uh, I don't know, highwaymen or nothing like that? Um, I was very fortunate mm -hmm. that nobody stopped me or robbed me or, uh -huh. you know, took anything from right, me. Right. Um, I had several animal encounters. I was almost bitten by a snake. Mm -hmm. um, I actually set up my tent in some high brush and it happened to be where a deer sleeps. Okay. And so the deer came up to my tent and started you know, pounding its hooves and blowing air out of its snout. Um, but it didn't attack me. I kind of made some noise and he ran away. Um, however, um, I guess one of the scariest things was out west in the desert. I was camping at night in 15 degree weather, it's about negative five degrees yeah. Celsius. Mm -hmm. And I was in my tent, in my sleeping bag, and my sleeping bag was inside something called a bivy. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bivy um, was supposed to give me some extra heat, mm -hmm. some extra warmth. Um, and so when I was enclosed in that, I woke up and my perspiration had made the inside of that wet. And so I woke up and my whole sleeping bag was soaking wet and my clothes were wet and it's freezing outside mm -hmm. so I was kind of like oh what should I do uh, I'm soaked uh, it was only midnight and I had the rest of the night um, so I had to change clothes and mm -hmm. sleep with turn my sleeping bag inside out and just well, you had, had a very miserable night <laughs> but um yeah and other times when it was raining very hard, my tent flooded, so everything was wet. Um, but it just the danger of not knowing where you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I slept in cemeteries. I slept in people's backyards, right on the side of the highway. Um, I slept in an ice cream shop. I slept in just a lot of strange situations. And uh, luckily, you know, no major incidents. So I was very lucky. OK, we'll get back to your walk and the purpose of your walk when we return. We have uh, Mr. Jared uh, Rickbaum who walked across America and his purpose was uh, for Be The Match. It's a national, it's an American, USA bone marrow registry to help people with uh, blood cancers. We'll be back right after this, stay tuned. Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. And uh, our topic uh, now, and our, our topic now is about uh, uh, bone marrow registry. We'll be talking more about that. And uh, we have a man with us. Our guest uh, is Mr. Jared Rickbaum, who walked across the United States 3,000 miles, almost 5,000 kilometers. So we'll show some pictures of the walk. We'll be back. Watch this. And what is this? Is this you? Yes, this is the cart that I push. Okay. Uh, it contains all of my belongings, such as clothing, uh -huh. first aid kit, tent, all sleeping right. bag, water, food, all, everything I had. OK. Yeah. And this is, this is what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, this is uh, what, I, what I you know, would eat uh, okay. most of the time, a frozen dried meal. Uh -huh. So it's just you, you boil some water and add boiling water, and you get enough uh, nutrition out of, out of that. Where were you at this time? Uh, this like was in Wyoming, Okay. just off the side of the highway on an exit. So some beautiful mountains in the background you there. You were more or less halfway there in Wyoming, Yeah, almost right? there, yeah. yeah. 
And uh, this are the people who met you along yeah, this, the way? Yeah, this is actually uh, the final day uh, approaching the beach there. That's um, some good friends and family that joined me uh, as I took my final steps into the ocean. And then Amar Amaroka. Yes, so Amaroka. that's a play on words. Right. So my campaign name was called Walking Across Amer Ameroka, mm -hmm. which uh, contains the word Mero, mm -hmm. uh, which was the cause I was walking for, Ameroka. Okay, next please. And? Yes, this is in uh, West Wendover, Nevada. Okay. Uh, famous uh, cowboy sign there. Oh, you're almost there. Just, yeah, that, that's <laughs> us. Right, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's, in, that's in postcards. Yeah, And I guess yeah. this uh, we sort of... Uh, so go back a bit. Uh, you're on top of a. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, we showed that picture. This yeah, is this is on top of a, a train. It was a stationary train. It wasn't moving. Yeah, I, uh, hope I just so. thought it was a cool yeah. photo oh, opportunity. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. Next one, please. Yeah. This it's is actually a couple days ago in yeah. here in, um, in the Galera. Philippines in Puerto Galera. Puerto yes. Galera. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, a friend of mine might be watching Puerto Galera. He owns uh, Ensenada Beach Resort. Uh, Ludwig, Lolo y Fuentabella. I'll be seeing you soon with no uh, typhoons. <laughs> okay, next okay. please. And this is? Uh, these photos all come from my Instagram account, and okay. this is an Instagram star. He's a fashion icon in America and okay. around the world. Uh, his name's Alonzo Mateo, mm -hmm. and he was uh, giving some publicity to be the match. And ah, um, right. so this is the day after I finished on the beach, hanging out with my friend Alonzo and, and family. Okay, yeah. next please. So uh, must be you. Yes, those are those are my feet. Uh, okay. I was lucky enough to have a New Balance sponsor. They gave me those oh, pair of good. shoes. Oh, yeah. I was going to talk about that. So, yeah, uh, so there were some a companies. Couple, a couple different right. companies. Yeah. yeah. So are they good? Yeah, very comfortable. Oh, great. Very comfortable. Okay. And again, there's another one of those fro scrambled frozen eggs with dry. bacon. Yeah, that's just a, a powder, but it tastes right. pretty good. And, and this is what I was asking you. This is uh, yeah. This is uh, just a friend of the family who turned a hundred. Not oh, really okay, related okay. to uh, to the walk, but I do admire her for living to a hundred. Of and course, I hope, yeah. I hope that we can all live a, a long, happy life. Centenarian. Yeah. Next, yeah. please. Prison area. Yeah, Where I, were you? I actually walked through a lot of areas um, that had this sign. Um, uh -huh. Prison area, hitchhiking right. pro prohibited. Right. So. Um, but you know, weren't hitchhiking. I wasn't hitchhiking, but I was wearing orange, which is the <laughs> color that prisoner, prisoners wore. So if yeah. somebody was driving by, they probably thought that I had just escaped from jail. Uh, so nobody stopped for me there. Okay. Uh, and, and this is the final day right. uh, reaching uh, the Pacific Ocean mm -hmm. in Long Beach, California. And right. we had about 200 people there on the beach making a gauntlet, two lines of, of people to high five me. Right. And then I took my final steps and dove into the Pacific Ocean. Um, a moment I'll always remember, very special, and so thankful for everyone who attended. Awesome, awesome. I mean, this was seven months after. Yes, yeah, seven months seven later months to the day. After. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now, question is this: uh, When uh, you were walking across America, was there ever a time when you said, uh, "I'm quitting"? Well, yeah, I, I'm stopping this. I mean, I can't do this anymore. Was there ever a time? There, there were. Mm -hmm. There were a few moments where. I was in so much pain. I had shin splints. Um, I had knee pain. Um, shin splints because of you were tripped or? Um, really? No, it's just something that you get from. It's really, you know, I took a week off in, in Denver. Oh, okay. And oh. um, when you start walking that long distance again mm -hmm. um, after not walking, it's just something that occurs in your okay. leg and it's right. very, very painful. Okay. So for about one month, even more than a month, I was limping mm -hmm. every day, about 20, wow. 25 miles a day, just limping. Um, so I walked in pain, and I was ready to give up. Uh -huh. um, but it was really um, just thinking about all the people who have gone through things much harder in their lives than I have, um, which kept me motivated and um, made me want to continue. Um, you know, there were, there were very tough times, but, you know, I was able to get through it all. No, I was thinking, uh, was this more or less like a Forrest Gump thing, wherein you'd go into a city or, or, or a county or something, and then uh, there'd be people waiting for you there and would walk with you for some distance? Did that, I suppose that, that did happen. It did happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, I was very rural for a long time, walking through cornfields. But then eventually I would hit a big city. Uh, this was my first time ever to Chicago, and I have a lot of friends there. Um, so I had hosts and you know people to stay with, and people that helped me have um, bone marrow drives in, in certain locations. Um, and 
uh, friends and family did join me and walk with me, but um, most of the walk, five months, was completely alone. Mm -hmm. um, in Omaha, Nebraska, which was pretty much the halfway point, I was, I came across another man who was walking across America. Oh, okay. Yeah, just coincidentally, and he was also pushing a cart very similar to mine. I and saw that so the yeah. two of us uh, joined forces, and we walked together for about ten weeks. You were going the same direction. Yes, we were. <laughs> we were. So that was fantastic. It was um, very nice to have somebody to camp with, and it made it more safe, and uh, to have not be so vulnerable out on the highway or in the desert by yourself. So. It, really gave me a piece what of mind. What was his cause? I mean, or um, he was just walking or? Yeah, he had just walking. graduated yeah. film school and just wanted to make a film. I was also making a film, so we helped film each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but he didn't have a cause. But another coincidence um, was that his mother happened to die of myeloma, which is one of the leading needs for a bone marrow okay. transplant. That's not so a he, coincidence. Yeah, maybe <laughs> not, maybe not. Uh -huh. um, so he was on board with me and helped me have some, some drives and really got the word out there also. No, I was just thinking, uh, seven months, uh, 3,000 miles, could you have gotten more than 500 uh, volunteers to do the swab? Or? Yeah, you would think so. It was very yeah. difficult. I could only carry about 20 swab kits ah, okay. with me at a time. So every right. time I would get 20 completed, I'd have to find a, a post office ah, and right. send them in mm -hmm. and then either wait till I was in a city or a town where I could pick up a new set of 20. Um, so it wasn't like I could carry yeah. hundreds of them with me and oh, you know okay. so, so it, it was made not it more just difficult. a swab I mean I thought yeah it was, it's a, it's it's a, a packet of paperwork yeah. right. and there's actually four q-tips in there mm -hmm. um, so it does take up quite a, a, a lot of room but there wasn't much room in my cart either mm -hmm. yeah okay now uh, from that uh, you ended November, November uh, 2015 yeah now uh, when you ended November 14 you said there was a uh, you wanted to end precisely on that day because it was a big event yes. for... So Be The yes. Match, the National Bone Marrow Registry, had a 5K, which is a couple miles. Uh, it's a walk-run. It's an event where about a 1,000 people um, just ran and um, ran or, or walked and raised awareness and money for the cause. And so because we had that big group together, um, I was able to have a lot of people um, on the beach for my final steps, as well as the news crews, um, and I got to give a speech in front of you know all thousand people, um, telling them about my journey and about the need to raise more awareness um, for potential bone marrow donors. And so far, I mean, what has been the result? I mean, like right now, you're hoping that uh, at least five of those 500 will have will find a match. Yeah, right. That's the best right scenario. Now. Or yeah. can it be better than that? Uh, yeah, it can be better than that. So once you register, you're on the registry until you're 61 years old. Okay. So, um, for example, myself, I haven't been called on as a match. However, I'm on that registry for another, you know, 35 years or so. We won't give away my age, but um, there's a chance that in 10 years I get that phone call and I will be a match, and you know, I save a life 10 years from now, and as well as the 500 people that I that I register. And it's something that I think I'll be involved with for the rest of my life. You know, I'm not going to stop registering people just because I finished with the walk. Um, in fact, when I get back to Pittsburgh in a couple weeks, I will have a registration drive then and try to register as many people as I can then and continue to do that. Okay, now what's the situation in the Philippines? We were talking about uh, uh, bone marrow registry in the Philippines, and apparently... Uh, is there or is there an so organization, an effort the, to... There is an organization. The, the Philippines does not have its own national bone marrow registry, but there is a, a worldwide registry that, that people can go and swab their cheeks and join. And it is called... Suchi. Suchi, Suchi yes. Right. Suchi runs the, the bone marrow registry here. And you can look up their um, address and just walk in and... Um, swab your cheek there and register and see if you are a potential match for somebody on the waiting list and you could save a life. It won't cost you any money and um, it'll be painless or, or if you're the no one reason not to do that. Or if you're the one in need, then you yes. can also go to this organization. Uh, we will check out, we'll give you the correct spelling later on, but I guess if you uh, just Google and uh, bone marrow registry, Manila or Philippines, I mean, you yes. should get some hits there. Right. right. So I just wanted to explain um, in America, you're, well, this, this goes worldwide. You're most likely to find your match 
if you need a bone marrow transplant in someone of your own background, your own heritage. So a, Filip a Filipino American who needs a bone marrow transplant is going to look to people of the Philippines, someone of the ah, same background, okay. to find their match. Mm -hmm. And the problem in America for Filipino Americans is that they're the, the, the least represented on the whole registry. There's the least amount of Filipinos on that registry. So if somebody, a Filipino American, has a blood cancer, they're least likely to find a match and the most likely to die because they can't find their match. So we're really encouraging Filipino Americans to go out and swab their cheeks and register, mm -hmm. and as well as Filipinos here in the Philippines to, to register and save, save lives. Okay. Now, uh, how, how would a Filipino, like for instance, I mean, I can imagine somebody's uh, watching right now who might be afflicted with uh, a blood disease that could be uh, fixed by a bone marrow uh, transfer. Is it they call it a transfer or transplant? transplant? Yep. Okay, so can they uh, tap uh, your organization maybe to find out? I mean, if they can find one in Asia? Sure. Okay, so that would be be the match. Be the match is the. Okay. Be the, you can't really access the be the match. Oh, okay. However, um, if you say had leukemia and you're here in the Philippines and you need a bone marrow transplant, um, the doctor at your hospital would access the worldwide uh, registry right. and find okay. whether or not you have a match somewhere, way, somewhere in the world. So it's not yeah. like blood that's, you know, there's type A, B, A, B, O. Yes. So it, this one is uh, really wide and varied. You're right. Um, it's completely different than blood. There's not specific types of bone marrow like there is with blood. And the whole process is completely different. Um, yeah. Okay. When we come back, uh, Jared, we're going to be uh, talking to, uh, we're going to be uh, joined by Adrian Belich, who uh, was the, well, by the way, he was the one who introduced me to uh, Mr. Rick Baum here. And uh, we'll be talking about something else, though. We'll be talking about uh, making a difference in the world, you know. All right, I'm Jerry Cornell, and we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome to Open House with Jerry Cornell, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news, or should be in the news. Earlier, we had uh, Mr. Uh, Jared Rickbaum, and we were talking about uh, bone marrow registry and his walk across America. Now, we have with us uh, two other gentlemen here. On the far left is uh, Sir Edward Artis, and that's not an expression. He really is a knighted. Uh, there you go, Sir Edward Artis. Thank you. Knight of Malta, Knight of Templar, the keeper of the Holy Grail. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and then we have with us, uh, well, we've had both of them before, Mr. Adrian uh, Belich, filmmaker. He uh, made uh, a PBA documentary. But uh, prior to that, one of the other things that he did was uh, Genghis Blues, which got nominated for Academy in the Academy Awards, and uh, you almost won. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, being nominated, hey, I mean, there were thousands of entries. And of course, we had with us uh, Mr. Uh, Jared Rickbaum, right beside me, who, among other things, walked across America. So with these three gentlemen here, we have uh, what they've accomplished, other people can only dream of, hope for. You know, I mean, a uh, hundred lifetimes for an ordinary person would not be able to come up with the things that these three gentlemen did. Okay, so, Adrian, why did you, I know why you invited uh, Jared because of his accomplishments, but how did this all get together? Well, I think. Well, Jared and I, we both did a program called Semester at Sea when we were at university. And it's in the States, uh, some people take a semester and study abroad overseas. And uh, Jared and I decided to do a very unique program called Semester at Sea where you get on a ship and you circumnavigate the globe for 100 plus days. And it, for both of us, it really changed our lives in many ways. You, I think, did, you did that? Yeah. 100 days? 100 days around the world. Okay. What kind of ship? And so it, it was a regular sort of cruise ship, very simple, very humble, not the ones you see on the reality shows. Okay. Um, very humble ship, and about 400, how many students were on there? 700 students. 700 years, 
about 450 on mine, and um, it really changed our lives. And we met on an alumni gathering, uh, cruise to Belize, we just realized, from Florida, and just connected. And I think, I think one thing I want to sort of demystify is that all of us are totally normal people. Growing up, we didn't stand, well, I mean, he's really good looking and he's kind of interesting, but we really <laughs> didn't stand out at all. We were totally normal people. Okay. And that's what's really important. I mean, he grew up in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. middle America. I grew up in Chicago, really in the middle of America. Mm -hmm. He grew up in Northern California, a small town. We're all totally ordinary people. You mean I'm the only extraordinary person here? That you are. <laughs> that you are. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, I grew up here in Manila, Philippines, and I love it. More fun in the Philippines, right? Yes. Right. Oh, by the way, Sir Edward Artis, uh, among other things, he was... Uh, one of the, I think you're the only person I know who was given uh, by act of Congress, he was made a Filipino citizen for his uh, service to the Filipino people. And what exactly, what was this service that made uh, the Congress of the Philippines give you Filipino citizenship? I, uh, I did the right thing because I could. And uh -huh. I knew that my skill was helping people, mm -hmm. like everybody here. And I'm from the same group. I build hospitals and schools to help the poor. Uh, that's what I did. Okay, now wouldn't, uh, of course you're gonna run for president of the Philippines. No, <laughs> no I don't do politics. <laughs> okay, now anyway, uh, the reason, the whole, this whole thing got together you have to focus, okay, it all started with this uh, gentleman out here, Sir Edward Artis. I was in uh, Greenbelt, I was walking around there, I saw this gentleman feeding the cats, the stray cats of Greenbelt. I said, uh, Sir, uh, you're feeding the cats. I said, uh, why are you doing that? And that started the whole thing. And then I, uh, then he said, they gave me a card, Sir Edward Artis, and then uh, he had a uh, documentary, it's called Beyond the Call, which happened to be done by Mr. Adrian Bellich over here. So that's how this thing connected. And uh, by the way, Beyond the Call, watch it. I mean, it, uh, you can uh, Google it or you can go to YouTube, Beyond the Call. I saw another Beyond the Call. Make sure you put the names of Adrian Bellich okay. and uh, Sir Edward Artis. And of course, from there, uh, I met up with these two gentlemen again. And then uh, Adrian said, there's this very interesting person who's in town. His name is Jared Rickbaum. He just walked across America. I said, okay, let's have him. So I ditched uh, our guest. <laughs> and that's Don't no problem. It. I mean, they, they willingly, you know, uh, uh, bowed out and said, yeah, sure. I mean, we, we, we'll, have, uh, we'll have Jared. So again, uh, you're, 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 you're the connection here. Uh, Adrian, so tell us a bit about Jared again and, uh, and uh, your connection with uh, Edward. Well, I think the reason why I so cherish my friendship with them is that, as I said, they're ordinary people who do extraordinary things. And I think one of the key things that makes them very unique is that they do it genuinely for the help of other people, not for their ego. We talked about today about fame. Not for the fame, not to stroke their ego, not to gain more power or privilege or prestige or anything like that. As Ed said, one of his key sayings is you do what you can, when you can, because you can. That's it. There's nothing else involved. And, um, you know, I mean, to walk across America because some friend of yours inspired you. I mean, we all have friends who inspire us, friends who struggle, friends in need. But to really go out of your way and spend seven months of your life, right. risking your life, right. to yeah. do that is a unique kind of quality amongst people. And the same with Ed. I mean, I could sit in America, you could sit in America comfortably and you don't need to do anything. Life's okay. We chatted about that. But for them to do what they do, that's why, and you know, okay, I make films, I don't do really crazy things like they do, but I help <laughs> amplify it. And so uh, when I knew that Jared was here, plus when we were chatting how um, in the American registry, um, the smallest represented group were Filipinos. And you know, the Americans, you know, Filipinos in America and Filipinos in, in the Philippines have very close ties. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by him being on your show, which is such a great show and, and you know, right Thank up you. his alley, they can help to encourage more Filipinos, both in the United States to register, but hopefully, as Jared discovered, there's no real national registry in the Philippines. Hopefully someone will see this and, and get started. So. Okay, now uh, I'm going to give you some time, you know, maybe a minute or two each, and I'd like you to give a message to the Filipino people. You know, I mean, uh, 
because you, you've had a lot of experience with the Filipino people. I mean, you've been here a while, you've been here several times, and uh, Sir Edward here was granted Filipino citizenship, and that is awesome. You know, I mean, uh, to be uh, given that by an act of Congress, I mean, uh, that doesn't happen. That rarely, very rarely happens. Now, uh, you, you've, uh, you gentlemen have done very outstanding things. You know, maybe you did ordinary, way, ordinary things in an outstanding way. I mean, walking is walking, but walking across America is something else. Now, these two gentlemen, Adrian and uh, Edward, I mean, they've uh, been to rescue missions in Rwanda, in uh, Syria, in all of these places. And uh, these gentlemen have actually risked their lives. Adrian and uh, Adrian and Sir Edward had uh, bullets and cannons whizzing over their head, and uh, I think some of your companions even, you know, I mean, got the bullet, yeah. right? So, uh, what is your message to the Filipino people? Well, I would say, you know, cancer does not discriminate age, race. Um, there's people all over the world that have cancers and blood cancers, um, and I would just say. Everybody knows somebody that's been affected by cancer. And one of the best ways to save a life is just to swab your cheek and register. Um, so to the Filipino people who have access to public transportation or a car, stop by, um, swab your cheek, register, see if you're a match. And if you'd like to go through with it, you may save someone else's life. Simple as that. OK, Adrian. I think as I said, you know, we're totally ordinary people from ordinary towns with ordinary lives. And the reason we've done what we've done is because of the choices that we've made. There were things that inspired us or things that caught our attention, and we just hung a left. Rather than going along the path that someone else chose for us, we chose our own path. And, you know, I mean, Jared's very young. I'm somewhere in the middle of my, my life. It's slightly more advanced than that. But, you know, like, I mean, when Genghis Blues came out, I was Jared's age. And now 29, now I'm 46, and so I remember. There goes your age. At his, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. But, but I, I think the, the important thing is, is not to look at us as something special or ordinary. We just t choose to do things that help other people, and in that respect, they're seen as special. But they're really ordinary things. And so anyone who's watching this, whatever their passion is, whatever their desires, whatever their curiosity is, look around because you're not alone. There are other people who, need, who have those needs. There are other people who want to help you, want to be part of it. So, you know, take some time in the next day or weeks and just think, you know, what really moves me, what inspires me, and, and make a couple decisions in your day to, to check a website or go to an event or talk to someone and, and try and make something more important. That's why Beyond the Call is called Beyond the Call. What is your calling and how do you go beyond it? And we each have that opportunity. Sir Edward. You know, you're saving lives right here, right here, the impact with all of us. We're all normal people, even you, Jerry. You're part of this. You watching this are part of this. There is a registry here in the Philippines we don't even know about. Suchi Foundation will do what he's asking you to do, what I'm asking you to do. How do you spell that? Uh, T-Z-I-C-H-I. Okay. Okay. Suchi. It's, there's a website. I'll, I'll give you all that information. We're going to bring somebody from Suu Kyi that's doing this. All the, there's 81 million people in the Philippines. How many times does 524 go into that number? We don't have to walk. Go to the hospital. We'll figure out how to get these kits. And I want to see how many people will gen join this registry here in the Philippines so that they can take care of the people that don't have a home. Because I, you know, I'm an old man, but I was moved by what I saw. We connected here because of being normal people that reach out to help people. Now, it doesn't cost money. We're going to do this, Jerry. I'm, I live here, so you can't get a room. I can walk across the street and get you. And we're going to do another show, please. Yes. Whenever you get, get us on right. with all the politicians. And we're going to save a life. Let's you 
are going to be responsible mm -hmm. for what we're going to do here. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. And Adrian's going to get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going and I'm going to grow my hair. No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. To me, I, the thing that I'd like to uh, add to this mm -hmm. is there is some urgency here. Yeah. I mean, don't wait till tomorrow or next week or you know when the when you have enough money or you know when when you know when your vacation comes when the kids get older. Hey, now there's no other time except now. So there is an urgency to this. Don't you know in your in your short documentary in the beginning the intro there's this guy who said you know hey, do good do it now. Yeah. You're gonna do good do it now. Don't wait tomorrow. Don't wait. You know, if you can't uh, give away a million dollars, then give away a dollar. Give 50 cents. You know, don't say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help out when I get my first million. But you have a, you know, you have a thousand down, give 10 pesos. You know, start now, no matter how little, no matter how small, take that first step. And again, with you, you know, a journey of uh, 7,000, uh, 3,000 miles begins with one step. So thank you very much, gentlemen. I mean, it's been a pleasure and privilege to have you gentlemen here. And again, you know, in all sincerity, I can say that the accomplishment of th these three gentlemen, you know, will probably uh, take 100 lifetime, lifetimes, in my case, and many of ours. But we can do it if we start now. Have the passion, have the drive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Salamat. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so and uh, Mr. Jared Brickbaum for being with us and sharing with us the experiences today. Till next week, take care. I love you. God bless you.